in this video, we'll discuss how we can actually see dislocations in the microstructure. You may think TEM is the only technique to reveal the structure of dislocations. In fact, many, many techniques can be used to help you visualize dislocations in the material. The first technique is the cheapest one. You can use optical microscopy to see dislocations. When you have dislocations present in the material and the dislocation line terminates on the surface of the specimen, if you etch the specimen, you'll see etch pits. This is true for both the edge dislocations and the screw dislocations. In the example on the right, these are magnesium single crystals. All those white speckles you see, those are edge pits. The reason why you see edge pits is because the regions near the dislocation cores are bent and they are under elastic strain. These areas are preferentially attacked by acid, giving you the edge pits. Back to the example on the right, the top two images are the crystals before deformation, the bottom two images are after deformation. In the bottom two images, you see these inclined lines, those are called slip tracers, which tells you the dislocation activities in the material. In addition to optical microscopy, you can also use atomic force microscopy to reveal dislocations. The figure is taken from an ACTA paper published by Montaigne and co-authors. The sample is magnesium oxide. Certain areas of the specimen has been indented using a nano-indentation device. Similar to the optical micrograph example in the previous slide, those dots you see, these are edge pits, and also you see those inclined lines, these are slip traces left behind by the nano-indentation. You can also use SEM to reveal dislocation structures. The specific technique is called ECI, electron channeling contrast imaging. When you have dislocations in the material, dislocations will bend the lattice near the core. The bending of the lattice will influence how deep the electrons can travel into the materials before they backscatter. The examples in this slide were taken from Professor Dirk Raab's website. Professor Dirk Raab is the director of Max Planck Institute in Dusseldorf. In the example on the left, the Ecke image shows the indent on the material and the dislocations emanating from the indent. In the example on the right, I believe it's a heavily deformed metal and you can see those dislocation cell structures. Coming to TEM, you can either use the two beam condition doing the bright field imaging or the weak beam dark field condition to illuminate dislocations. In the two beam bright field condition, dislocation lines appear to be dark in a bright background. For the weak beam dark field condition, dislocation lines appear to be bright in a dark background. The weak beam dark field condition gives better resolution when doing the dislocation imaging. Either you're doing the two beam condition or the weak beam dark field condition, you have to be aware of the G dot B invisibility criterion, where G is the diffraction vector and the B is the Burgers vector. If G dot B is equal to zero, the dislocation will not show any contrast. If you are interested in this topic, you can refer to my TEM dislocation imaging and the weak beam dark field imaging videos in the TEM course. Whenever you're doing TEM, you must bear one thing in mind, is that what you see is a 2D projection of a 3D object. In the example here, it seems we have long and straight dislocations, but if we tilt the specimen, they are actually stacking faults. The last experimental technique we're going to cover in this video is atom probe tomography. This is a very famous figure from Blavat, published in Science in 1999. You can see the dislocation in two ways. The first is through the cultural atmosphere. You have boron segregation in the aluminum alloy at the dislocation core. The second way is to draw the Burgers circuit. If you count the bottom line, that's 1 to 21. But if you count the top line, that's 1 to 22, that's extra half plane, giving you an edge dislocation. Before wrapping up today's video, I want to briefly talk about two computer simulation techniques 
that allows you to visualize dislocations. The first is the dislocation dynamics simulation. Again, the GIF was taken from Professor Dirk Raab's website. Each line you see in the cube represents one dislocation. The dislocation-dislocation interactions were modeled using the forces of dislocations we discussed in the last video. Going down to a smaller scale, you can also use the molecular dynamics simulation to model dislocation activities. This work was done by my friend Yi Zhe when he was a postdoc working with Professor Mark Myers in UCSD. He modeled the dislocation activities around a void when the void is growing in tantalum. At the end of this video, I hope you have developed a basic understanding of what techniques you may use to reveal dislocations in your material. Starting from the next video, we'll enter a new chapter discussing dislocations in different types of crystals.